Hi folks and welcome to How's It Rate. Um, today uh, we're going to do something unusual. Um, some friends of mine have asked me to or asked me what kind of knives I suggested um, for their kitchens at home. Um, in other words, what type of knives should I buy uh, to have a good assortment and be able to perform the duties necessary in a kitchen? <clears throat> well, that's a real hard question to answer, number one because there are many duties in a kitchen that one needs to perform but not everyone performs the same duties. Uh, some people don't want to chop their own vegetables and things of that nature. Uh, some people just want to cut uh, meats. Some people um, use a knife in, in many ways and some of those ways are right and wrong. So um, I guess what's important number one is to, to find out first what the knife is for um, and then how to use it properly. And there, there's many knives to choose from. And just an example, um, I, I happen to cho choose this for, for our, my first video because there's going to be many on this subject. There has to be. There's just too much information to cover. And in the end, hopefully uh, someone will make the decisions of which knives they prefer to use and uh, I will also at the end of the presentation or at the end of the video uh, series make a rep recommendation of a few knives that you can buy without having to go out and spend a whole ton of money on a million knives. Um, one knife can do the job of many if used correctly uh, but it should be associated or somehow uh, uh, designed to handle a specific task more than all other tasks. In other words, they're specialized. Uh, this knife that I have in my hand right now is called a chef's knife. And this is probably the most used knife in a kitchen or in a restaurant. And wherever there's duties to be done with a knife, this is probably the most used. It's used for, for chopping, for slicing, for cutting. It's a very versatile knife. Um, and when I say it's used for cutting, you won't be using this knife or shouldn't be using this knife, uh, let's say, for, for um, sectioning a large chunk of meat. That's a whole nother knife. This is a general purpose knife in the kitchen. Its main duties, again, are chopping and slicing, um, things of that nature. Now, one of the things that all knives have in common, and I think we should go over that first, is how they're constructed and what they're constructed of. Um, a lot of knives are made from carbon steel and carbon steel holds a great edge uh, or you can put a great edge on it but it doesn't hold it very well. And another thing about carbon steel is it tends to get a patina of either rust uh, or discoloration of the, the metal which can uh, transfer itself to the food. So carbon steel is a, a good material to make a knife blade out of and that's what a lot of knife blades are made out of uh, but it has its disadvantages of, of holding an edge and also transferring a metallic taste to, to foods especially acid foods. So the next material would be uh, um, stainless steel. Now stainless steel holds an edge not quite as well as it should but it has the ability of not corroding and therefore um, gives you an advantage as far as transferring the flavors that you don't want, especially metallic flavors, to the, uh, to the product uh, that you're working with, the food. Um, as I said, stainless steel uh, is a good choice, but it really doesn't hold an edge as well as it should. Um, the other material that's used and is very common and is a bit more expensive but holds a great edge and has all the attributes of the stainless steel as far as not um, transferring any bad flavors is carbon stainless steel. Okay, That is a good steel for a knife. Holds an edge, has, doesn't corrode, uh, it's a great knife. Now um, also the way a blade is made, there's forge blades um, that are made by hand uh, those are the best blades, okay? They use kind of the same process. Uh, the only way I can describe it is think about a samurai sword 
where it's hand beaten and folded and such. Uh, the, the blades are manufactured by hand. They're, they're, they're uh, very, very good blades. Um, the other way is to just take rolled steel and they stamp them, boom, with a die. And what happens is they have a shape of a knife and then they grind it and they just put an edge on it. That's the cheapest knife you could probably buy. I wouldn't recommend it if you want to keep a knife for a long time and you want to have a, a, a knife that you're going to uh, use and, 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 and find that it performs well for you. You've probably heard of serrated uh, or ceramic blades. Ceramic blades are exactly what they say, ceramic. Um, they do hold a very, well, they do have a very nice edge, okay, and they do hold it quite well. The only problem is that they're very brittle, very difficult to resharpen. Um, one trip off the counter if it goes onto the floor on a hard service and you're going to have a lot of little knives that aren't worth anything. They just shatter. So my favorite choice would be a uh, carbon steel, stainless steel. Okay. Now, as I mentioned, um, most knives are uh, constructed the same. Okay. This, the very end of this this knife here is the point. Okay. Doesn't I mean you know unless you're going to stab somebody, it doesn't really you don't use a tremendous amount of the point when you're when you're preparing um, or cutting. This portion to about here is called the tip, and um, the tip. Again, it's not something you use a lot, but you do use it. This part of it is called the edge, okay? And the edge is where you, exactly what it says, the edge. That's where your cutting area is. Um, and this part back here is the heel, all right? That's the end of the knife right here, okay? This area right here is called the bolster, okay? And this area is the handle, okay? And the handle is made up of uh, either wood or uh, some composite material. I've seen bone handles, things of that nature. And a very good material for the, for the handle is stainless steel. The only problem with um, stainless steel is that it tends to be a little slippery and it also adds uh, a lot of weight to the, uh, to the knife. But it is the most sanitary and most durable. And there are some stainless steel knives with, you know, little tiny kind of like serrations in it so that you can get a better grip, especially when it's wet. But if it has that, then again, you have to be, you know, diligent in cleaning the knife. Now, also in the handle is what uh, the portion of the knife that is called the tang. All right, and the tang basically is when they when they manufacture this this blade. The, the tang actually is, is part of the knife and stretches into the handle. And a full tang is exactly what you want in any knife that you buy if it's available. On a chef knife, it's definitely going to be available with a full tang. And what that means is that section of steel that's part of the blade is going to go right through the handle all the way to the end of it. Okay? And on this knife, you can see that the, the, the blade just continues on. Okay? all the way to the end and it has two pieces of wood which they call scales and the scales can be made out of just about any material and on, a, on this knife with the wooden handle there's rivets you may or may not see that on, on all of them okay also on some may, some knives you may see uh, the blade not be straight here where the bolster is they may have a finger guard, which is just a little swelled part uh, of the knife, okay? Uh, this one doesn't have that, um, but it's still a finger guard because you're, it's still protecting your hand up here from, uh, from any really sharp edges, all right? Now, the proper way to, to hold a chef's knife is not to grab it like this, but to put your, your forefinger and your thumb up out here on the blade and then your third finger there so you have a grip that looks something like that it gives you a lot more control all right um, and that brings us back to the tang a lot of the pressure when you're using a knife is right here where the handle and the, and the main blade meet all right now being that this is a full tang no matter how much pressure I apply on this knife 
this tang, this piece of the continuance of the steel makes it much stronger. If <clears throat> the tang were to only go, let's say, a quarter of the way, or not at all, <clears throat> on a real cheap knife, what happens is that you apply pressure, the handle can and will separate from the, uh, from the knife. So that's not a good scenario. So full tang, very important. And also, uh, when you're maintaining your knife, when you're cleaning it, okay, clean the blade well, be careful because it's sharp, we hope it's sharp, and also do not put them in a dishwasher because it will, especially on a wooden handle, it will ruin the handle and it can separate and loosen from the rivets and then the knife is worthless or, you know, you, you could bring it supposedly somewhere and maybe have it repaired. Uh, but they won't guarantee most knives if you put them in a the dishwasher. Plastic candles, different story. Uh, some of them are two parts, some of them are molded, it, it depends. But uh, I prefer the wooden handles. Um, I don't put my knives in a dishwasher. And also, when you're, when you're done cleaning the knife, try and keep it separated from the other things in the drawer that you store it in. Uh, preferably put it in a block or something to protect the blade because it will ruin the edge. You know, knocking against other things is going to ruin the edge. Another thing that's going to ruin your edge is improper cutting boards. Uh, in the old days, wood was used, and wood is a great thing because it uh, was a, a, a pretty easy surface to clean, but as we went on in time, we found out that a lot of bacteria grew in there, and blah, 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 so they didn't use it anymore. But the wood didn't destroy the blade. As you can imagine, when you're cutting, you know, you're, you're cutting through the product, which is okay, but if it hits something that's rock hard, it's going to damage the blade. So today we use uh, these nylon type uh, cutting boards, very easy to clean and they don't harbor bacteria, but after a lot of use you will see that the surface of that cutting board is marred up and it can harbor bacteria. So, you know, if you you got to rinse them off with a little bleach and water to, to sanitize them. But that's down the road, we'll talk about that down the road. We're also going to talk about, <coughs> excuse me the proper way to use this knife in the kitchen, things that this knife is, is, is made for and um, how, how it can help you in the kitchen. Most important thing about a knife, it's more dangerous than dull than it is sharp. You want a good sharp knife when you're working, otherwise you're going to force the knife and that can lead into problems, okay? I've seen a lot of people get hurt with that. And one safety tip with any knife that you're working with in the kitchen, if you lose control of the knife for some reason, uh, it's sitting on a table and you push it, it starts to fall, do not grab the knife and try to keep it from falling. Back away, let it fall. If it's damaged, it's damaged, but there's nothing worse than trying to catch a knife and you grab it by the blade and if it's sharp, it's going to do some damage on you. So we've covered um, the materials that uh, are used to make a knife, and we've covered what the the, the knife um, uh, components are. Okay, uh, I don't I know if I mentioned the spine. This is the spine, by the way. All right, um, that's the back of the knife where it's not uh, sharp. Don't use it for a hammer. I've seen people open jars in kitchens with them. And, pound thing. This is not a hammer. If you need a hammer, get yourself a freaking hammer. All right? Treat a knife with respect. It is a tool and it can be a very expensive tool uh, depending on which type of knife you want to buy. All right? But this is a standard chef knife. And um, there are so many versions out there that that, that have been made and, and I don't know why some of these uh, celebrity cooks and such recommend all these crazy knives with the flutes in them. Now the fluting is great, it, it helps, okay, but it's not necessary, it doesn't work that well. And what a flute is, is they put these little indentations down here on the blade, and what that does is it keeps, supposedly tries to keep the, the food from sticking to the blade, like a cucumber when you're cutting it or something has a tendency to want to stick. You know, big deal. It's got a little moisture on it, you know, it's going to stick to it, but if you're cutting right, when it sticks to it, it's just going to push up and fall off anyway, and it doesn't take much time to, to just push the stuff off the blade. So you don't need that. I mean, if you, if you get one with it, it's not going to hurt anything. So um, 
I think I've covered everything on what a knife is made out of and what uh, the good things to look for on a knife are as far as the material that's used to make the blade. Uh, also, the simple fact of what a, um, a full tang versus, you know, no tang or a, a half or quarter tang. Uh, this, this, this piece of metal in there, the tang, is extremely important. That's probably the most important part about purchasing your knife. Whether it's made out of the best material or the worst material, if it breaks in half on you uh, and the handle comes off, it's dangerous and, and it's not worth anything anymore. So make sure you look for a full tank. Um, the next video, uh, we'll go through another knife. Okay, I plan on, on going through um, most of the knives that are available in sets. Um, just to explain how they're used, what they're for, whether they're really that necessary or not, um, and what you can get away with it if you're on a budget, okay? There are some basic tools that you just need, basic knives, and you can get away with maybe three or four um, basic things, and you'll never be caught surprised in the kitchen, okay? So, um, again, the most important knife that you'll own when you're working in the kitchen is your chef's knife. This is a very, very versatile tool. If you're going to spend a lot of money on a knife, this is the knife to spend. Uh, the, the knife to spend it on. Boy, getting all tongue twisted here. Okay, so we're just going to go over the important features again. Try and get yourself um, some uh, carbon stainless steel. Okay, that's what you want. You want a blade. Oh, I forgot to mention that a comfortable blade is about 8 to 10 inches. This is a 10 inch blade. You don't want something too short. And I'm going to tell you why in upcoming videos you'll see why. But it does affect the performance of the knife. Um, if you're very petite and have small hands and you can't handle a big knife then you have no other choice but to get one that's a little shorter. Another thing that's really important when you have your knife in your hand Okay, and I see a lot of people that suffer with this all the time, especially a friend of mine who had big hands and he had this knife that was, it was killing him and it was killing me when I tried to use it. But basically, uh, if you can see this, when you put this knife down, at some point you're going to rock the knife all the way down and, the, and the, the, the heel of the knife is going to touch the cutting board. Well, there's nothing worse when this distance here to here, all right, isn't big enough to protect your finger. So what happens is you're slicing away and bang, you hit your knuckles, the knife never even touched yet. And if the food is at this back end of the, the, the knife, all right, it's not even going to cut through. Very, very frustrating. So make sure when you buy your knife that you have a, an area, um, enough clearance to clear it when it's down, when the whole knife is down on the cutting board. You want to be able to have all your knuckles there, at least a quarter inch, half inch spacing. That's a big deal. Very important when you buy your knife. So don't just look at it. Put it in your hand if you can and, and make sure that you have that clearance. So um, that basically uh, covers it except for um, moving on to different knives, and um, which we will do. If you have any questions, please, this is my first video on uh, the knives. Uh, as I said, I was asked by some friends. So if, if I missed anything, um, please feel free to ask in the comment section below. I'll be more than happy to answer you as quickly as I can. Uh, and uh, if you have any suggestions of how I could present this better, um, please let me know that too. But you will find that we will be demonstrating these knives and other knives um, and how they're to be used. Um, we may not do every knife out there, but what we're going to do is cover at least uh, the knives that are going to be your most important tools in, in an everyday kitchen, or, or even for that matter in a restaurant kitchen, okay? So um, again, just please let me know, and we'll see you soon with our next video.